These are tofu drag buildings in China. Walls shatter with the touch of the hand, and staircases crumble with the stomp of the foot. They are likely a reflection of the fragile real estate industry in China. Following the arrest of the head of China's Evergrande Group and his family, it's rumored that founders of another real estate giant, Country Garden, the father and daughter team, are also in trouble. As the new head of Country Garden, the daughter donated 5.9 billion yuan, or U.S. 820 million, of her shares in Country Garden to the Hong Kong Guoqiang Foundation in September 2023. The foundation was set up in June 2023, several months earlier with her sister being in charge. The intention to transfer capital seems very obvious. It's similar to what Xu Jiayin's ex-wife and son did, leaving China early before Evergrande exploded with debt. Radio Free Asia reported on October 13th that a rumor is spreading that Country Garden owners Yang and his daughter were suspected of being controlled by the Guangdong police. The rumor began to spread among Chinese financial media professionals as early as October 12th. Rumor has it that hundreds of thousands of homes under construction in third and fourth tier cities have an uncertain future due to a break in their capital chain. Mike, a senior lawyer in Shenzhen, said that Yang may be under surveillance, but there were no details. Lawyer Mike said, Anyway, they are under residential surveillance. There is not much confirmed news here today. A media person affiliated with the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences who requested anonymity told a Radio Free Asia reporter that the female boss's so-called donation of equity worth 5.9 billion yuan in July was a very sensitive matter. This may be viewed by officials as a disguised capital flight. He said, If you ask the police, this is what they would say. According to our laws and regulations, at this stage, the police must keep it confidential. What Country Garden donated to is a charity foundation or a family trust or what? What's been done is like a blatant attempt to transfer capital, and this will definitely provoke the government's wrath. You see the Evergrande incident. It has triggered the crisis in Hebei Bank, right? Now the Yang family is being controlled again. Surely it will lead to the same bank run problem. The media source also said that there were problems with the Country Garden's projects in Malaysia, which also attracted the attention of local authorities. He referred to the Forest City project in Malaysia, which was planned to house 700,000 people. The project represents a snapshot of Country Garden's business strategy. The project, Forest City, which costs hundreds of billions of dollars to build, is also Country Garden's golden signboard overseas. It has been completed about 15% after 10 years of construction. It's currently at a complete standstill, and the community is like a ghost town. Since it broke out that Country Garden defaulted, this project has become targeted by creditors, hoping to recover part of the creditors' rights from the unfinished large project. China's Sina Finance reported on October 11th that Country Garden was in a bit of a panic after Xu Jiayin's arrest. In a monthly meeting held on October 9th, the current president of Country Garden revealed that boss Yang Guoqiang had already sold his private jet. Yang has about four business jets. He put one large jet up for sale last year, but he still hasn't found a buyer after more than a year. There was another aircraft jointly owned by four people. Three months ago, Yang offered to sell his share, but the amount was unknown. For the news of Yang selling his aircraft to pay off his debts, sources familiar with the matter confirm to the media that one has been sold and the other is still for sale. After falling into debt distress, Country Garden issued an announcement on October 10, 2023, that the company had HK 470 million due and unpaid, which wasn't expected to be repaid within the grace period, including the possibility that all its offshore debts wouldn't be repaid. According to the announcement, it has hired China International Capital Corporation Hong Kong Asset Management and Huliahan Loki China Limited as financial advisors, and Sidley Austin LLP as its legal advisor to assist in evaluating the company's capital structure and liquidity position and to formulate an overall solution. This means that the restructuring of the offshore debt of Country Garden has officially started. Another noteworthy event in the announcement on October 10th was that the president of Country Garden Services, the only cash cow under Country Garden Holdings, also resigned on the same day. 
In the previous July, he significantly reduced his holdings in Country Garden Services and cashed out more than 28 million yuan, or US 3.9 million, which has triggered rumors that he planned to jump ship. Country Garden's debt structure is also more likely to trigger mass protests because its projects are spread across China, more so than Evergrande. If something goes wrong with Country Garden, it will have a wider impact. For example, as of the end of 2022, of the total liabilities of more than 1.4 trillion yuan, or US 200 billion, the largest proportion is from pre-sold homes, which is as high as US 93.1 billion, or 668.2 billion yuan. Followed by upstream and downstream payables of US 61 billion, interest-bearing liabilities include bank and other borrowings of US 22.6 billion, senior notes of US 9.85 billion, and corporate bonds of US 4.5 billion. As Country Garden's cash flow crisis continues to worsen, the outlook for home buyers is becoming increasingly bleak. In order to alleviate short-term financial pressure, Country Garden extended its overall domestic debt, that is, to extend the grace period of the debt. In September, nine extension plans for domestic corporate bonds with a total principal amount of approximately US 2.012 billion obtained the necessary consent from the relevant bondholders, and the overall debt maturity was extended by three years. However, industry insiders aren't optimistic. Some analysts believe that because the current situation of the entire real estate industry isn't good, Country Garden may not be able to pay off its debt even with a three-year extension. China's economy continues to be weak, and the property market has failed to rebound as well. It's going to be difficult for Country Garden to rely on sales proceeds to repay its debts. Another default episode by Country Garden, a leading real estate company that was regarded as stable by the public, has dealt a major blow to market confidence in what's already a fragile real estate industry. For ordinary people, their most intuitive experience is that when they want to sell their properties, they find that prices are falling at an alarming rate and homes can't be sold. Wuhan's property prices are falling so much that it's getting scary. A home lost 500,000 yuan, or about 70,000 US dollars straight. I have a classmate who bought a house in Hanyang in 2021 with a total price of 1.52 million yuan, or $210,000, a down payment of 520,000 yuan, a mortgage of 1 million yuan, and a monthly payment of more than 6,000 yuan, or $836 per month. At the beginning of this year, he plans to sell his home. Originally, he thought it was next to the business district, not to mention the appreciation of the property, at least it wouldn't depreciate in value. That was what he thought. The property has been on the market for half a year now. There wasn't even a single viewer, and the occasional phone calls were all from real estate agents, who told him to lower the price. They compared his property to other properties and told him to lower the price a bit more, or no one would buy it. My classmate didn't believe it at first, thinking it was all a setup by agents. Then he went to the major websites to check all kinds of offers. He really didn't know what to look for and was shocked by what he saw. Now the maximum price of this property is only 1 million yuan. He has a direct loss of one third of the value. With the processing fees, taxes, interest and so on, he would have a direct loss of more than 600,000 yuan, that is 84,000 US dollars. The agent also told him that the real selling price of this property would be even lower than the one he saw online. He advised him to sign an exclusive agreement to sell the property, and if he doesn't sign it, no one will promote the property and it won't get sold at all. My classmate is in a dilemma now. He will lose too much if he sells. If he rents it out, he will still lose after calculating the depreciation of the property. He doesn't know what to do. It's hard to tell the value of things. The longer the property is kept, the more it will depreciate. What if he really turns out to be stuck and can't be sold at all? Do you have any good ideas? In fact, Chinese people nowadays are really at a loss about the current situation. They just want to protect and recover their property, but the situation has become very complicated.
Take a look. Poyang Rural Commercial Bank secretly changed people's mortgages into renovation loans, making it impossible to get low interest rates. National policy couldn't even lower interest rates this time on September 25th. Everyone, take a look and pay attention to Poyang Rural Commercial Bank. Everyone who borrows money from this bank should pay attention. To make matters worse, bank runs have occurred. After Xu Jiayin, founder of China's Evergrande Group, was controlled by the authorities, a detailed list of bank loans owed by Evergrande was recently circulated on social media platforms, triggering many depositors to cash out of Hebei Changzhou Bank. On the list, Changzhou Bank ranked 16th, and the amount owed by Evergrande Group was as high as RMB 3.4 billion, or about US 500 million. On October 10, 2023, a number of videos show that many of its retail branches have many depositors lining up. The halls of some branches were seen crowded with people, while in some other branches, depositors were seen lining up in the front to take out money. In order to prevent a bank run, online money transfers were called off by the government. Later, attempting to appease depositors, Changzhou Bank came out to dispel the so-called rumor. The local financial management authorities issued a joint announcement in response to the rumors about the bank, telling the public, don't believe in rumors and don't spread rumors. A police officer from the local public security department told the mainland media that its department had begun to detain rumor spreaders one after another until 3 a.m. on October 10th, and quite a number of people had been detained. Staff from the board of directors' office of the bank told customers that the official announcement to dispel the rumors doesn't seem to be working well, and people were still queuing up at branches to withdraw money. Changzhou Bank, the insiders all say it's fine, no problem. Then why do so many people come to take money out of the bank? You tell me, why? Public information shows that Xiangzhou Bank was reorganized and set up in 1998 on the basis of 13 city credit unions. It operates 28 county branches and 23 municipal branches in Xiangzhou region. The latest data shows that by the end of the first half of the year, the liabilities of the bank exceeded RMB 220 billion, or more than US 30.6 billion. This showcases the mentality of the Chinese people during this period. They are scared of losing their money and want self-preservation. After all, many real cases have already happened. Rotten-tailed or unfinished buildings are everywhere in mainland China, and public protests have emerged one after another. On the evening of October 10th, a project built by a large real estate developer in Yangzhou, Jiangsu province, turned into an unfinished building. Homeowners collectively defended their rights and asked the developer to resume work. A large number of police officers were dispatched to the scene to maintain stability. Eventually, special police escorted the developer manager out of the site in a police car. <laughs> Warn once, warn twice, please get out of the way. Otherwise, the public security personnel will take compulsory measures. Get out of the way, please, get out of the way. What gives you the right to warn people? Your behavior has already violated the public order. We want our homes, and the people's police should be for the benefit of the people. No obstruction of official duties, no obstruction. Hey, take this person away. What are you doing? Take him away. <coughs> Bullying people is all you know. Get out of the way. We spend millions to purchase homes, but don't get them. You're just bullying us people. You just take him, the developer manager, away? He has money, so you are escorting him away? I curse you, these bad people. Arrest this homeowner. You can't take him away. If you want to take him away, take us all away. Let's go together. In some cities, even with the strongest support from the highest levels of the CCP, it still can't prevent the fate of unfinished buildings such as the huge cluster of unfinished buildings in Chang'an New Area. 
This is Chang'an New Area. Why is it different from what I see online? It feels like there's basically no one here. You can't even find a restaurant here. They're all closed. I have to GPS quite a long way to find this restaurant. This is the Chang'an New Area, and these are the new homes here. All of this shows signs of a real estate slump in China. According to China's official data, during the eight-day Golden Week holiday, which kicked off in late September, the average daily area sold in 35 representative cities was still down 17 percent compared to the same period a year ago. The sales value of the top 100 real estate firms in September was 404.2 billion yuan, the lowest in five years, and a further drop of 29 percent on a year-on-year -year basis. Citing a recent survey of 2,000 consumers, Morgan Stanley said in a research report on October 10th that more than 80% of households surveyed were reluctant to enter the market or unsure if they wanted to do so when asked about their plans to buy a home. Of those surveyed, 42% expect house prices to fall over the next 12 months, while 23% expect them to rise. The survey was conducted between September 25th and 28th in the first to fourth tier cities in China. A home worth 2 million RMB or US 280,000 will have to be sold for 1 million RMB. Wuhan's real estate market is completely out of control. Whether it's the developers or these people who invested in homes in the early stages, they're all rushing to get rid of the homes on hand in the face of the long downward spiral that can be seen coming. It's a trend no one can can stop. Nowadays, the price of second-hand homes in Wuhan is dropping daily. It's like a wall that everyone is pushing against, and the drop in price is faster than people can change their opinions. Now it's virtually a new price a day. If it's not sold on the first day, the owner will lower the price a little bit the next day and continue to sell it. So the developers have to keep lowering their prices. The landlords who really wanted to trade their homes are also overwhelmed by the trend. The longer they wait, the lower the price becomes, and the homes are still hard to sell. What are they supposed to do? So, as long as someone is willing to make an offer, any price cut is possible through negotiation. If it's not too outrageous, the landlords are willing to sell. What do you mean by too outrageous? For example, the usual discount is 30%. If you are asking for a 50% discount, that is outrageous. I have a friend who is in a hurry to cash in the home that was given to him as collateral for the construction fees. The home used to sell for 2 million. Today, a customer offered 1.2 million outright. I thought surely he wouldn't consider it. Who would have thought that after a few hours of a negotiation, they reached a deal? You have to know the offer was virtually half of the price, something one wouldn't have imagined before. Yet, the construction company agreed to it. In addition to the current construction companies who have many homes in their hands and are anxious to get rid of them, there are also real estate investors. In addition to landlords slowly accepting the reality real estate developers are slowly accepting the reality too. Have you heard recently that the price limits might get lifted? If they don't let go, allowing developers to follow the market rule to lower prices, then they are really finished. If the homes remain unsold in this way, it's likely that they will be sold at half or even one-third of the price later. At that time, properties would be really like cabbages. Selling a home would be like selling cabbage. When it's fresh in the morning, it's 5 yuan a caddy in the market or even 8 yuan a caddy for the better ones. And when it's about to rot in the afternoon, 1 yuan a caddy is possible just to dispose of it in a hurry. The fundamental reason is that from 2018 to 2019, there were too many people buying at crazy high prices, resulting in many properties on the market with no liquidity. Now, these people can't hold on to it anymore and are anxious to take action, resulting in great selling pressure in the market. For many landlords, if you want to trade your home or plan to sell it, I advise you to sell it as soon as you get an offer. Otherwise, the price will become cheaper and it will be harder to sell later. If you don't believe me, think about your mentality half a year ago. Back then, didn't you want to wait and see too? What did you get from that? It can be said that the story of Evergrande and Country Garden has destroyed the beliefs of many Chinese people who once considered that as long as the government's regulatory hand remained, betting family assets on the property market would be safe. Now, although the government's hand is still there, the wealth in the property market has begun to evaporate. China's property market is rapidly showing its true color, and just like China's overall economy, the CCP is helpless. 
The collapse of China's real estate industry has exposed the illusion that the Chinese Communist Party and the Chinese government have instilled in the Chinese public and the international community for a long time. This Red Party is not as powerful as it claims, who can always resist normal market laws.